Greetings, and thank you for joining us for another SANS ICS Concept Overview. I'm Don C. Weber of Cutaway Security and a certified SANS instructor. In this video, we will discuss ICS network architecture using the Purdue Enterprise Reference Architecture, PARA, also known as the Purdue model. We will provide a quick overview of network isolation and segmentation using the SANS ICS SCADA reference model which is based on the IEC 62443 standard. If you enjoy this video and the topics we cover in the SANS ICS concept overviews, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment if you have a question about this topic or suggestions for future content. If we want to secure a control network, we need to understand how it was built. We need to understand the requirements that went into its design. And most organizations are going to build their control networks, their, uh, their processes, uh, leveraging the Purdue Enterprise Reference Architecture. Uh, as you can see here on the slide, it's called PARA. Most people refer to this as the Purdue model. Okay. To understand this, I like to start explaining it by uh, starting from the inside and moving out. Our uh, level zeros, it's broken down into different levels. Uh, so our level zero are going to be our sensors and actuators, the things that are actually gathering information from our process. You know, uh, uh, temperatures, um, uh, temperature sensors, pressure sensors uh, might have some actuators that are interacting with uh, um, different components uh, on that. So those are going to be our level zeros. Working out for where from there, our level one is going to be uh, devices that are controlling these things, so controllers. So most people think of it the programmable logic controller, the PLCs. Those are going to be at level one. And then level two are going to be our local supervisory levels. And anything that's associated with uh, managing that process right there at the process, that's going to be our level two. Okay, Those are going to be organized into our uh, lines or cells uh, and also referred to as processes. Typically, this is uh, different from sector to sector. So as you're going to different organizations, they're going to call them slightly different things. But our processes, our lines, are going to be a combination of that zero, one, level 0, 1, and 2. Okay, and We're going to have multiple processes in, in an organization. Those are going to tie into a larger portion of the network, uh, mainly to communicate with master servers. And those are going to be our plant-wide control networks. Our master servers are going to be at our level threes. We're going to find things like Active Directory, Asset Management, Data Historians in there. We're going to have a better example of this in just a second. Okay, But that is your control networks, level three, two, one, and zero. All right, But no control network is uh, operational without the business network. In other words, we have some business servers that are providing information or requiring information from the process. We have the infrastructure that is providing uh, um, communications for all of our teams, uh, whether it's uh, um, email servers or telephones or, or anything like that. So our business network is going to be our level four. And this was planned and organized uh, and outlined in the ISA 95. And this was done to ensure that the process was uh, deployed uh, in a consistent manager that helped with availability, resiliency, to ensure that the process ran, that the different parts of the process didn't have a negative impact on each other. Okay, But as the uh, industry progressed, we started realizing that this didn't really define security. In other words, this was implemented at the very beginning before security was necessarily a consideration for these types of environments because they're usually unique. Okay, But what was great is that this organized the uh, control networks into some very segmented areas. So if if a process, uh, the, the process itself, so 0, 1, and 2, a, a single process in those at those levels, it's isolated from all of the other processes, okay, or segmented at the very least if they're connected uh, via the Ethernet, 
okay? But what this provides us is this provides us a method for managing the communication flow to each one of those areas, natural segmentations that we can start considering for enforcement boundaries. And that's what the industry started doing in the ISA 99, which eventually changed to the ISA e, uh, IEC 62443. It's leveraging this Purdue model to implement security. In other words, you can just add it onto your requirements for your processes, and it makes it a lot easier. Now, we've taken this uh, within the SANS class, and we've kind of broken this out a little bit better because the, uh, the documentation um, that is uh, readily available online um, just has this image that you see here in this slide. But we generated the ICS-410 reference model, and we actually have a poster. So I'm going to switch over to that, and let me... Uh, switch windows and now we can see here this is one of the posters that we provide uh, with our courseware um, it's actually uh, um, we break this out in, in more detail in a, a lot of slides okay but this is the ICS 410 SCADA reference model and as you can see here we have all of the different levels that we just talked about. So if we're talking about a, a level zero, we have our field devices, and then we have our level one, which are our local controllers, level two, supervisory, okay? In there, uh, we actually uh, have defined here a, an enforcement zone, and this is called a minor enforcement zone. The minor enforcement zone is between levels three and two because there has to be a lot of communications uh, and less restrictions because of the requirements for the process. Uh, you know, uh, major restrictions uh, uh, could uh, inhibit some of the communications, cause a delay in the communications, and so forth. So we're going to leverage that as a minor enforcement boundary. Okay, and we'll drill into that in just a, just a moment. Uh, from there, uh, level uh, three communicates with level four. We're going to have, this is going to be our major enforcement boundaries, okay? And we're actually going to have what we call a DMZ between that. It's an ICS, ICS DMZ. Some people call it a level 3.5. It, it really depends on the organization. So if you walk into an organization, you say, hey, level 3.5, they're going to look at you strange. Well, let them know that you're referring to the ICS DMZ. And most places that I've gone to, I've actually called it the ICS DMZ, and they're like, oh, 3.5. So it really depends on where you're going and who you're interacting with. But that's going to be a major enforcement zone between level three, your site-wide or plant-wide uh, control network, uh, and the business network, the plant business network. All right. Now, most organizations have multiple plants. You know, I've been into a distilleries, I've been to a, um, a distribution, and they have uh, the distribution have multiple warehouses. Distilleries have multiple distilleries, but they're managed by a large organization, a corporate enterprise. Okay, well, they have a, at that local plant or that local warehouse, they have a local business network. That local business network is tied into an enterprise network. And so what we've done in our reference architecture is, is we've generated a level five, uh, and we can see that here. So our enterprise network, which is most likely going to be connected to the internet and to the cloud, uh, and that is going to be a major enforcement zone uh, as well between our level four and our level five business and definitely uh, to the internet. We can see all of that represents a little bit better in this uh, um, large uh, ICS 410 um, site reference model. Okay, and what I like about this is this is broken down into uh, some more granular information, uh, especially at the level three, we can see that uh, highlighting our master servers, historians, our centralized HMIs, uh, work groups for individual roles, operators, engineers, testing and staging areas, uh, cybersecurity operations, and so forth. For some large organizations that ICS DMZ, the uh, um, level 3.5, we can see here that it, uh, that we can grow that and, and have multiple DMZs uh, within these areas uh, for very specific roles. Uh, probably the most important one is that remote access, that remote access DMZ. Uh, we don't need, we don't necessarily need our vendors and integrators um, communicating with our uh, read-only data historians that are going to be in, in some of these DMZs. 
we only need them to uh, uh, communicate with some of our bastion hosts or jump hosts that are allowing them into the control network from their remote locations. And so our remote access uh, ICS DMZ can be separate from our other DMZs as well. So this is just a reference to help you break it down. You can see that the, this one has multiple uh, processes or lines, uh, A, B, and C. There might be some cross communications between those, uh, but uh, a lot of times they're going to be isolated. However, since we do have that potential of communications between processes, and also we want to reduce the latency, probably the biggest difference between all of our enforcement zones and this one is this is going to be one of our minor enforcement zone boundaries. We're going to be using access control lists um, rather than full-blown firewalls. For our more secure organizations, the ones that are a larger target um, or have some more critical infrastructure, then we're, we may find some firewalls in these areas. A lot of times we're going to find industrial uh, type, uh, industrial protocol type firewalls that are going to be aware of the different types of communications, whether it's Modbus, uh, Profinet um, or, or any one of the other industrial protocols, it will be able to interact with those and provide limitations and logging around that. Okay, now this reference architecture, this, this image right here, is a good teaching tool. However, it doesn't really represent uh, a, an actual uh, control network. You know, it, it, it has all of the different features of it, but it Sometimes I find it hard to reference uh, and, and talk about a specific network. So what I also wanted to do is I wanted to show an actual network that was organized uh, in these different levels following this, uh, um, uh, this architecture, the Purdue model. And so I reached out to some of the SANS ICS team and asked them if they had any resources. And I was provided with this. And this is just a, a, a diagram um, that has been sanitized you know, from, from an orga another organization. And uh, as we can see here, it is an implementation of an actual control network that leverages the different zones. So we can see at the very, very top, we have the enterprise zones, level four and five, and some of the um, devices and um, types of uh, business uh, um, assets that we would find in that area. Uh, the next level, we have an industrial demilitarized zone that's protecting four and five, so our ICS DMZ or, or level 3.5 for those that, of you that prefer that. Um, we can see that in that area, we're gonna have other different types of systems um, that are going to uh, provide some communications on our internal environment. In this case, uh, they use some uh, read-only patch management and AV servers and so forth uh, that were specifically configured uh, to stop the, the, to grab information from the internet and then the devices on the inside of the control network would reach up and grab what they needed out of that. So it operated as a DMZ to provide patch management and other types of information that's necessary for the control network to, to run and to update. Then we see a breakdown of the industri what they're calling the industrial zone in this one. So our levels three and below, which are breaking down into our different cells. So if you're interested in looking at this and some of the devices, uh, it might help you understand uh, how to implement this within your organizations. That's why I wanted to provide this. You can pause the video and, uh, and you know, kind of really zoom into that. Okay. Uh, when uh, so my final thoughts. Uh, the Purdue model provides guidelines for designing processes and the networks that allow them to communicate. And it's been implemented associated with the requirements for that process. But if we start thinking about that process, if we start thinking about the Purdue model and our enforcement zones, we can see how we can take those enforcement zones and use them to augment our requirements for the process. And when we're developing our new processes, we can have those requirements for the enforcement zones. When we're ready for maintenance to update certain portions of our process, we can include these enforcement zone requirements there, all by leveraging the model that is uh, associated with building uh, control networks internationally. Thank you for tuning in to another concept overview with the SANS ICS and Cutaway Security Teams. 
Please let us know if there are other topics you would like us to cover in the comments below. If you enjoyed the content, please be sure to like and subscribe to the SANS ICS YouTube channel. This has been Don C. Weber of Cutaway Security. Go forth and do good things.